thanks for supporting the project. Uh, James, uh, Re Representative James Arena de Rose is here. Thank you. Um, we have some select board members. Select board members, Chair Eric Johnson, uh, Vice Chair Steve Sai, Paul Dorensis, Marion Neutra, Jeff Waldron. Thank you. Um, Planning board members, Addie Mae Weiss is here. Uh, any any other planning board folks? They were instrumental in the project. Thank you. Uh, retired uh, town planner Gino Carlucci. Gino. He was, he was very helpful in securing funds and the initial design and scoping of the project, complete streets, uh, priorities, all that. So thank you, Gino. Uh, George Fisk is here and other members of the, the Sherburn History Center. Uh, and Sherburn uh, Historic Commission. Thank, thank you, Chief Galvin. Um, the project design engineers were Kim Lee Horn and Associates. Uh, construction contractor J. H. Lynch and Sons. They're here. Did a great job. Thank you. Um, little shout out um, today to O.B. Hill Trucking and Rigging. They uh, helped today move this 10,000 pound monument down the street. Um, it's the, the Leland Obelisk. Um, so, um, anybody else I should point out here? Um, but anyway, the, the new this new roundabout looks great. Um, it was designed and constructed to increase pedestrian and traffic safety, improve traffic flow, and provide traffic calming increase accessibility by extending sidewalks, constructing ADA compliant wheelchair ramps and crosswalks. Uh, this, this important intersection is important for regional mobility uh, in that more than 25,000 vehicles travel through Sherburn daily uh, coming through this intersection. Prior to these improvements, the intersection was one of Sherburn's most hazardous. In 2023, there was a significant vehicle accident occurring every month. Over a three year period, there were over 30 vehicle accidents at this intersection. Uh, we want to acknowledge our partnership with the Commonwealth that's helped construct the intersection improvements. The project was financed with local capital appropriations. Um, thanks advisory, thanks town meeting. Um, $340,000 in MassDOT Complete Streets funding, a $500,000 grant from the MassWorks uh, Infrastructure Grant Program uh, made available through the Executive Office of Economic Development in the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. So of the monies received from the Commonwealth amounted to 75% of the construction cost for this intersection, which is great. Thanks to the hard work of all, the project was constructed on budget and on time. Uh, and tomorrow morning, the detours will be removed and the new intersection will be open for use. So, thank, thank you for your patience through through this detour. I think we were able to get the, the project done a whole lot faster and, and more efficient, and it, and it looks great. Um, at a later date, I just want to point out a later date, there'll be another ceremony to dedicate, uh, rededicate the, the Leland Obelisk uh, and to celebrate its move to the new location. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and though many folks have contributed to the project, before I hand it over to Sean, I want to acknowledge and thank him for all of the uh, for managing this project and all of the untold untold hours that he's put into managing, coordinating. Uh, even today, he was got his hands dirty, he's helping uh, level and set the monument here. So, thank you, Sean. Thank you. I don't want to bore you too much, but I do. I want to just go run through some dates real quick just to show the commitment the town had to this project um, it dates discussions about this intersection date decades beyond before this but there was a you know a light study back in 1994 which the town opposed thankfully um, and then in 1996 there was also a proposal for a, a roundabout but in 96 they were designing a much larger it would have been land taking from several different properties and probably wouldn't have looked as good as this uh, 2003 mass dot in combination with a much larger project proposed it the town still wasn't 
ready for that big of a project. Uh, more recently, and, and this plays into several people that are here, and a, a lot of hard work went into the Complete Streets Prioritization Plan. Bill Scully, who's now with Kimley Horn, helped develop that. Gino was instrumental in that. Uh, all the members of traffic safety, some now members of public safety, probably hundreds of hours discussing all the different priorities throughout town. This And th this roundabout was always part of that plan. Uh, so that plan got adopted in, in 2017. In 2022, we asked for the monies and the town gave us the money, 150,000 for engineering. And that kind of kicked it off. We knew it was gonna take several years to get the engineering done and then find the funding. 2023 MassDOT, as Jeremy had said, awarded uh, this phase of our complete streets. It's kind of a, a running grant for the 340,000. October 23, we reappropriated some monies that were left over from some projects. And then October 23, we got the final grant that we needed, um, which is called the Rural and Small Town Development Fund. Uh, our representative was instrumental in helping with that. Um, Arena DeRosa. And then we kicked it off in May. May 13th, we started getting materials here. Let's see, June 17th, we closed the road, and today we're cutting the ribbon. So that was good. And I want to just reiterate how important it was to have a design that we knew we could pull off, and a team. They're all standing over there. The lynch. We knew when we were finishing the design and going through how we were going to close the road. We couldn't have done it without having the confidence in the team to be able to do it inside of 60 days. Because for obvious reasons, the buses weren't going to make it through this detour. So it was with the confidence of a, a partners like J.H. Lynch that we were able to pull this off. That's about all I have. Thank you. Um, anybody else want to say a few words? George Fisk should. No? What's that? Anybody want to say a few words? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, George. I wasn't planning on this, sure. but why not? Um, you mentioned, Sean, that you know you said it went back decades, and I can't remember what date you went back to, 1990-something? 94. I got news for you. <laughs> I said, no, I said decades before that. <laughs> I recall distinctly the, the late 1960s, there was a big discussion, and there was a proposal to put a light here, and it really was the select board that turned it down um, but in any event, I, I would just say that uh, Sean has been, I've been working on and off with Sean for the last couple of months, and I'm so delighted um, that he saw fit, and you all did as well, to have the obelisk placed here. Most people in town had no clue that the obelisk existed. Um, I did know, and um, I was so pleased uh, to be reminded that I had said many years ago when I was on the Historic District Commission that I would find a, a, uh, a place that would where people could see it. And little did I know it was going to end up here. It hadn't occurred to me a, a roundabout, but I think it's appropriate. I think the roundabout itself without the obelisk is terrific. But that adds a little character to the town that I, I appreciate and I suspect you do as well. So thank you, everybody. Uh, is it also for safety? In other words, when the when the well, road yes, is icy, people can find it. <laughs> it's a traffic calming. Right. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Well, you ready? One, two.